Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome back to Through the Keyhole. This is a series where we take a look at a number of player camps I found around Fallout 76 and get a few ideas, a little bit of inspiration for our own builds. As per the usual disclaimer, these will not be my camp builds, but the exception of this one here, of course. But they will be ones I found via the player vending system in game and thought were really cool and would like to show off. So, without too much further ado, let's jump right in, shall we? So, as I'm sure you guys are well aware, tomorrow is the day that Wastelanders finally drops for us, and I'm very, very excited to get stuck into the brand new content. Very, very much looking forward to it. I will, of course, be live streaming everything I possibly can of that, so the plan is to go live just about as soon as the servers come back up after the update. Obviously, don't quite know when that is yet, so you'll have to keep an eye out and watch the space for that one tomorrow. But if you hit that notification bell, you'll know when I go live. YouTube will handily notify you of that one. So, do keep an eye out for that one, I do hope you'll join, although of course I fully understand if you would rather be uh, stuck in playing yourselves. For now, let's jump on and get a look at some of these camps, shall we? So, camp number one. This one's a little different to the sort of thing I would normally put into one of these videos. It's got a bit of an unfinished vibe, I don't know if that's deliberate or if it's just actually not finished. It's also right in the middle of the road, not too far from uh, the White Spring Station. It's a little bit different, there's some very very cool ideas and the decoration is uh, pretty unique as well. So. I thought despite the relatively basic structure of the thing, it would make for an interesting camp to have a little look around. We got a little bit of a surprise towards the end, as the player unfortunately logged off while I was uh, taking a wander around, but we got enough of it to have a good look. So, here's the first cool thing. So we don't really get very many people taking advantage of that siren, but uh, it's a fun little way to announce that somebody has made an arrival at the camp, which is quite cool. <laughs> Obviously, you see it at the top there, it's uh, making the player's presence known in a uh, very dramatic style. Got a full off first memory as well. So we'll uh, switch that off. But as you see, it's a different sort of a build. It's a single room with uh, different levels around the outside. Got a bit of a prison vibe going on with the, the jail doors in the corner there. But lots of very, very cool things going on. I like the ice skulls and a little bit of coloured light around there from uh, back around Christmas time. Gives it a unique splash of colour. Lots and lots of decoration. <laughs> Pop the toilet in there, I should say. Of course, you don't want any uh, unexpected visitors, so that makes sense. Plenty of stuff on the walls. As per, they've gone to town with the uh, mounted animal heads. Got a few Christmas uh, presents stuck in the play case there. All the essentials spread out, nice and easy to access on the ground floor there. Is cool but it does make the upper stories a little bit um not exactly redundant per se but you get the idea got a few bits and pieces tucked up the top there you can see they've got the um brewing stations there from uh, a new Kishine update way back when <laughs> sufficiently long ago that i had to think about that though well head on up to the top level and take a look around from up here wipe the view down from up here Clearly gone, gone to town on the defences at the top there, which is uh, fair enough. I would imagine that's part of the reason this has got its somewhat unfinished vibe. I imagine they've run out of uh, potential building space, given the number of turrets and stuff they've got up here. But it's quite a cool, unique approach. I like that they've used the construction lights up here as well to illuminate the lower level. In the evening, that would make for a, a different look to the place, and probably quite an effective way of illuminating it, actually, which is quite cool. They are a little demanding, but they're good if you need focused light, so that's always very, very cool. Some heavy laser turrets up here, covering the entrance. And nice view, nice bright uh, carpet on the floor as well, which is cool. This is coming up to the point where I got uh, unceremoniously ejected from the building, so uh, <laughs> that will about uh, wrap up this little tour. So, on to build number two. This one is down in the Cranberry Bog, and I don't see a great many camps down there. I've seen a couple recently that have been very cool, this obviously being one of them. really like the use of the location here. It's a little island, just sort of surrounded by water with a couple of bridges coming onto it. And rather than building something big, they've gone for a kind of village vibe. Looks like they've used the uh, trees that were added to the Atomic Shop boss long ago. I've not had the occasion myself yet, but they fit in quite nicely. Place a um, very natural feel. One of the things that I really like about this, apart from the fact they've done separate buildings, which is something I need to have a crack at at some point, is they've really made the most out of um, 
something that works particularly well in 76, which is building small. This house is really, really quite small, but it's packed in with the decorations. Still plenty of room, room plenty of room even, <laughs> to move around in here, which is cool. But uh, they've mixed up the shapes, they've done different angles, so you've got to walk around corners and stuff, which really gives it a lot of life and a lot of um, really cool little vibe to it. Seem a bit more interesting than just the, the boxiness that the game kind of pushes you towards. Has been very well avoided here. The decoration is absolutely on point as well. Plenty of it, but it's not overdone either, so that's nice. I like the overlap of the posters though, that's quite cool. Nice little mix and match of uh, textures there as well, mixing up the uh, brick internal walls with the wallpaper as well works really, really well. Nice feature vibe, which is cool. And the plants as well. Nice little splash of colour. It's a really, really cool little build. Really good example for people who are struggling a bit to create. Um, something they're happy with to like I say build small and then try and mix up the angles things like that which has been done really really well here I like it a lot they destroyed bridge over there the other entrance to the little settlement I suppose village might be another word and then here they've got the workbenches and the uh, prefab here Halloween decorations, a few bits and pieces from Fastnacht, which will of course be coming back in May, to look forward to. Hopefully I'll be able to take advantage this time. And this person has a Instagram on full display here, so there it is if you want to head over there and check it out. Got some cool uh, fan art and different sorts of stuff on there, it's quite cool, worth a look. I really like this little design for the shop as well, stepping on the pressure plate to open the doors and reveal the vending units is really, really cool. Different approach, and plenty of decoration tucked in there as well. Very, very nice. It's nice to see somebody's done something uh, very creative, very different, which is always cool. Got a water purifier there, not overdone, just the one tucked around the side. It fits in quite nicely with the rest of the build. Very, very cool. I get the impression from their uh, Instagram page that they've been here for quite a while, and I don't blame them in the least for this build. Very, very nice. Very, very good use of the brick building pieces as well, which is really, really cool. So, on to build number three, and this is another one we've sort of shown builds in this location before. I've seen a lot of people building at this particular uh, monorail arch, it's just up from the main monorail lift station. Uh, there's a junk, ben uh, junk node, I suppose, just behind the arch here, which is cool. And you see various different approaches to this, some uh, pull it off better than others. This is one that definitely pulls it off very, very well, like the random toilet out there. But Definitely more appealing than the one that's occupied by the Mothman. Can't imagine that one smells much particularly good after it's been used. Most people tend to go for an entrance to their upper part of their camps in this location on the other side. So one of the things I did like about this is they've come around the side here, done it a different way around, which is cool. Little signs out. All built using the upper floors, of course, built off that staircase. A tight squeeze to get at the uh, decontamination arch there, but it does work. Come on inside. And another small space decorated really, really well here. There's some stuff in this that has worked particularly well. It's really impressive. The decoration is, again, on point. Vendor's tucked in nice and tight to the walls so you can get through the middle. A lot of internal walls giving it a, a little bit of separation, which is cool. Display case is very, very full there, which is cool. One more reason I'm debating, as I said before, about getting Fallout versus so that I can separate out um, crafting materials and things that I don't want to scrap, so that I can use them for decoration in uh, display cases, stuff like that. I'd love to know how they've got some of these uh, things that don't appear to be in clay display cases positioned as well. I'm guessing they're um, atomic shop items that they've just placed, plushies and the like, for the most part. Some of them are obvious, some of them are less so, so I assume that must be what they've done. Coming up to an upper level of squeezed in here, which I've not seen anybody do before, which is quite cool. Nice little bedroom here. Still disappointed uh, Bethesda didn't make that four post bed a little bit bigger. Would have suited the style better in my opinion, but nice up here. With this little curve of the roof here, it could be quite awkward to work around, but they've managed to get the stairs in exactly the right place that it feels quite close, but you've got plenty of room to manoeuvre around it, which is really, really cool. I like that a lot. You ought to have the Nuka Girls cut out there. Little kitchen space, hang out, have a bit of munch. Hems in the fridge. They've crammed a little lamp into the um, cooking station there, which is cool. Looks like somebody's souffle is nearly done. 
back down the stairs, mind your head. It reminds me of the house I grew up in a little bit, that one. So duck your head on the way down the stairs. <laughs> very, very cool. I really like this. Decoration's absolutely brilliant. I imagine it looks great at night as well, but uh, obviously one of the unfortunate things about this particular series is I've got to take the opportunities when I get them. I can't really take a second look around in the evening. But you make the most of it. So this place certainly done and come up with a very, very cool build. I like it a lot. Take a little look at the back. See they've uh, not glitched per se, but positioned the floor pieces so that the walls snap in to close up the gaps and it looks almost like they belong as places we're going to get with the materials we have available which is very very cool so camp number three camp number four even <laughs> the last one got some visitors whilst i was here quite a small one but uh it works this one obviously we're in the mire as you can tell and it's a uh, below the bridge build which i've seen quite a few of and this one is definitely one of my favorites so we've dropped around the other side, not the side this suggests, coming from the back, because it works particularly well. You can see they've got the ceiling really, really low here, or rather the floor quite high. And it's a tight squeeze, but they've managed to get the um, clearance about spot on, in my opinion. Plenty of decoration crammed in under here. Everything fits and it works. The power armor station is clipping through a bit there, but I like the low headroom. It gives it a really unique vibe, gives a good feel to it. And as I say, plenty of clearance. Everything fits in nicely. Uh, Voltic generators to keep the noise down and the smoke down as well I suppose. This little area here they're not going to be able to build on very easily and certainly aren't going to be able to scrap those things in down on the ground there, the boxes and stuff so they've made it. a little feature out of it which is cool extended their internal space here a little bit. You can see there just how low compared to the normal building height things are which is quite cool I would have liked to see them do maybe a little bit more with this bit of the river that comes down here. Quite a nice sort of feature there's potential there but all in all they've managed to squeeze everything in really nicely and create camp that's got a very unique feel to it which is very very cool we've gone for the stone pieces around the crafting areas and then woodworking on the floor the laminate floor there where uh, they're not crafting as much apart from the kitchen area is a really really cool vibe all in all really nice use of a limited space and the um, rural doors close the place off quite nicely as well which is very very cool so, there we have it. Four more very cool builds, very, very cool things that people are doing. I'm um, looking forward to seeing what people do with the uh, new stuff coming in at the uh, Wastelanders in a couple of days, or, well, tomorrow, in fact, which would be very, very cool. Hopefully we'll get some new styles to uh, build, which would be very interesting to see. I'll be keeping my eyes very much peeled. For now, thank you guys for watching. Do hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found some uh, inspiration from those builds. Good work on the part of those who've uh, been featured in today's video. If you did enjoy the video, please do hit those bumps for which was very, very much appreciated. Social media links down below as well if you want to catch up with me on Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. Do head on over and drop me a follow. For now, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.